People love to say that fasting is dangerous, and in some cases, they are right. Fasting can be dangerous for some people. I'm Dr. Erin, and you should know I love fasting for erasing stubborn fat and reversing metabolic disease. But today, we're gonna talk about when fasting can actually be dangerous and why. So many of you have written to me saying, I'd love to fast for my health, but my doctor tells me I can't. And look, your doctor should know everything about your health. So in most cases, I would heed their advice. But in some cases, we're dealing with an idiot doctor, someone who is completely uninformed about fasting and has a misunderstanding about what you're asking. I have a lot of beefs with traditional medicine, but this is a big one. In medicine, we're often taught that patients can't be trusted to make their own health decisions, as if they can't handle the information and think critically for themselves. I believe if patients are given honest, clear information, they can make smart decisions. So today I'm gonna give you the information and trust you to make a smart decision for yourself. So I'll break the people that shouldn't fast into three categories. The first will be the obvious one, the one that we'll all agree on. The second is the medical or medication group, the people that may need some supervision. And the last group will be a little surprising. These are people that can fast, but may be doing it all wrong. And fasting wrong or for the wrong reasons can be quite dangerous. Let's start with the easiest ones, the people who obviously should not be fasting, pregnant and breastfeeding women. If you're growing or feeding another human, this is not the time to restrict your nourishment. You need food. Your metabolism is already working overtime. Kids and teens. When you're still actively growing, still laying down new bone, muscle, and brain tissue, this is not a time to restrict food. It's certainly the time you should be learning to eat right, learning about how to properly nourish your body, and introducing structure into the timing of when you eat. For obese kids and teenagers, intermittent fasting can introduce that type of structure. Kids can eat in an eight to 12 hour window in a day, but these windows need to be flexible around school, sports, and other activities to ensure that these growing kids are getting enough nourishment. People who are underweight or malnourished. If you're already running on fumes, fasting will not detoxify you. It will only further deplete you. You can't hope to build metabolic strength without fuel in your tank first. People with eating disorders or a history of restrictive behavior surrounding food. Fasting can turn into a control game for these individuals. And fasting isn't about control. It's more about freedom from food addiction. So you've got to heal that relationship first before you ever consider fasting. Okay, now let's discuss the folks where fasting can be safe, but supervision is advised. People with diabetes, especially if you're on insulin or sulfonylureas. These are drugs like glipicide and gliburide. If you're not sure what type of drug you're on, ask your doctor. And of course, you can always just ask me. Just comment below if you have questions about your medications and fasting. I'm always more than happy to chime in and help you. And can I get a like for that? <laughs> While you're here with me, please like this video. Okay, my diabetics, you can absolutely benefit from fasting. Fasting is one of the best ways to reverse insulin resistance and I have helped many people completely reverse their type two diabetes with fasting. This also helps type one diabetics get that blood sugar under tight control and need less insulin, which protects your health greatly over time. But if you're on one of these medications that actually lowers blood sugar, you need to be careful when fasting. You will need to taper these medications off over time. That means you need to watch your blood sugar closely while you fast and have rescue medications and foods nearby, just in case. Next is people with thyroid or adrenal issues. If your hormones are swinging all over the place, then fasting can actually make them worse. Not because the fasting per se is bad, but because your body is already stressed and not handling it well. So especially if a diagnosis related to your thyroid or adrenal glands is new to you, that needs to be stabilized first. You wanna be well nourished, make sure you're getting enough protein and minerals in your diet, and then train your metabolism through fasting. And you wanna walk slowly into fasting with a little intermittent fasting first. People on multiple daily medications. Some meds have to be taken with food or timed around meals. Fasting can change the absorption of these medications, and sometimes that's okay. But it's something you definitely need to plan around and not ignore. Again, if you need help, 
just comment below and I'm happy to help you figure out your meds. Although friends, if you take like 90 medications, I am gonna ask you to schedule a consult. Recovering from illness, infection, or surgery. And honestly, if we're talking minor infection, minor illness, minor surgery, oftentimes I will turn to fasting for the healing properties of fasting. However, if your body has taken a major hit, major healing is going to take protein, nutrients, and calories. This may sound like I'm walking a fine line here, but I think you know the difference. If you're not sure, just ask. But in general, when your immune system is working hard to rebuild, it's not the best time to push some metabolic discipline on it. It's time to rest, hydrate, and refuel. Okay, now let's get into the group that no one talks about. The ones who can technically fast, but are doing it all wrong. Chronically stressed and overtrained people. If you're living off caffeine, skipping sleep, and running on adrenaline, adding fasting will be like tossing gasoline on your hair that's already on fire. You've got to get out of survival mode first. Fasting puts a little more stress on the body, but this is good stress. We call this hormetic stress. A little bit of it goes a long way, but if you're adding a little bit more stress onto a mountain of stress, that's not gonna do any good for your body. Then I have these folks, the ones that say, okay, I'll just stop eating and hope for the best. You need to know, when I teach people how to fast, one third of the time I'm teaching them how not to eat. Two thirds of the time I'm teaching them how exactly to prep and recover. Fasting without proper nourishment in the prep and recovery phases is like running a marathon without doing any training. You end up dizzy, cranky, and blaming the fast. When the truth is you skipped all the most important parts, which are the nourishment. And lastly are the chronic dieters who want to add fasting to their regimen. Some people who try to join me in fasting have been actually dieting for so long that their metabolism is on strike. Learning to fast is really powerful, but not for somebody who's nutrient depleted, low on electrolytes, and terrified of food. Fasting only works because you fuel properly before and after not because you're learning to white knuckle it through hunger. Bottom line, fasting can be dangerous. But notice what all of these groups have in common. They're all missing a foundation. They're all undernourished, overstressed, or undereducated about how the body actually works. So it's not a problem with fasting necessarily, but a problem with preparation. For those of us who educate ourselves and learn how to do fasting right, Fasting can be the single most powerful, affordable, and flexible tool to reset your health, to erase stubborn fat, and completely reverse disease. If you want to learn how to fast the right way, how to properly prep, fast, recover, nourish your body right with support, join me in my fasting program. Comment below if you'd like the link and you want to check that out. And if you like hearing my no-nonsense approach to naturally healing your own body, subscribe to me here. Like my video, share this information with friends, and tell me what else you'd love information about. I'm more than happy to be that doctor in your pocket who's helping you make the right decisions for you.